Levioso. Levioso. A levitation charm. Levioso. Like many, I've been waiting for a truly excellent Harry Potter game since I was in the third grade. There have been some decent attempts, but none that come close to truly fulfilling the fantasy of receiving your own Hogwarts admission letter. With Hogwarts Legacy, I'm happy to say that magic has finally been captured. Its open-world map absolutely nails the vibe of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. It has spellcasting combat that's stupefyingly good, the characters that inhabit it are charming and unforgettable, and it is positively brimming with countless diversions to soak up dozens of hours of your time. It may not be the most impressive technical achievement, and it is certainly cursed with a lack of enemy variety, but none of Hogwarts Legacy's issues can cast a Descendo charm on this triumphant visit to the wizarding world. Right in line with most Harry Potter tales before it, Legacy's plot has more holes than a fishnet stocking, and sorta just expects you to accept that its magical world makes no sense. This mystical action-adventure RPG begins with you transferring to Hogwarts as a fifth year, for unexplained reasons, to do everything from attending classes to fighting giant spiders. The fantastic character creator has plenty of options for you to craft your ideal witch or wizard, and as soon as you do, they'll immediately become entangled in a conflict between the wizarding world and an evil goblin. On top of that, because being in a secret society of wizards is apparently not exciting enough, you soon discover that you've got some freaky supercharged magical abilities that allow you to do extra cool stuff that also isn't really explained. If you're like me, you'll roll your eyes while 100 years worth of dead characters lecture you from paintings about the important history and how you have to save the world or whatever. But once that's over with, Legacy mostly redeems itself with a fantastic cast of non-painting characters that help boil things down into a not-too-convoluted good guys versus bad guys conflict that ends up being a largely enjoyable tale. Ah, 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 ah. I am afraid it is too late to study now. You'll spend most of your time with the classmates who befriend you on campus, accompany you on certain quests, and help you hone your abilities as a magic user. Most are memorable and instantly endearing, like Sebastian, the cocky and morally pliable Slytherin, good for getting places you're not supposed to be, or Notsai, the clever and unflappable Gryffindor. I had it all under control. Spending time with them and improving my social links through the relationship quest lines made my stay at Hogwarts all the more enjoyable. Unexpectedly, I even found myself looking forward to hanging out with my professors, whether it was my main man, Professor Fig, who serves as both something of a mentor and as a sidekick, or the wisecracking charms teacher, Professor Ronan, who made me love him mostly by making fun of me. By the looks of it, you all spent your holidays practicing Obliviate on one another. <laughs> Each of these characters feels like an indispensable piece of the school, and you could find them wandering the halls doing their thing and choose to spend time with your favorites. It's a huge and important part of the Hogwarts fantasy that Legacy knocks out of the park. Even better, though, is the world itself, which is packed with nearly everything I wanted in a Potter game and more. You'll find yourself wandering Hogwarts's stone-cobbled halls and secret passageways, flying around the Forbidden Forest on a broomstick, and exploring dark caves lit only by the glow of your Lumos spell. The developers at Avalanche have so brilliantly captured the look and feel of the wizarding world that I was amazed at just being there, no matter what trivial errand I was wrapped up in. That immersion could occasionally be broken by Legacy's dicey performance during my time playing on PlayStation 5, though. That includes frame rate inconsistency, weird lighting issues, aggressive pop-in while moving around quickly, and more. There's even this weird thing where every door in Hogwarts has a brief loading screen. It's understandable since there's so much packed into this beast of an adventure, but the PS5's promises of the death of loading screens haven't quite been lived up to here. As someone who finds the wand-whipping fights in the movies fairly dull, I was very concerned that Hogwarts Legacy's spell-slinging combat wouldn't be able to hold my attention across the roughly 32 hours it took me to beat the campaign. But I can admit when I'm wrong. The combat is fantastic, challenging, and utterly captivating. There's a lot more to it than shooting balls of light out of a stick. Instead, the trick is in dodging and countering enemy attacks while pulling off creative combos. 
Stupid. For example, you can pull enemies toward you with Accio, light them on fire with the close range Incendio, then blow them away with the explosive Bombarda spell. Chaining together abilities to make your opponents look like complete fools never stops being amusing, especially as you unlock talent tree perks that enhance your skills with modifiers that make your elemental spells fork to nearby enemies or transform into AoE attacks. Many of the combat encounters are legitimately challenging too. I'll admit I died my fair share of times while trying to show off a new set of spells or by neglecting to see a goblin sneaking up behind me. Improving your skills and figuring out which spells work best for you is a really entertaining process, filled with experimentation and the occasional maiming. There's even a perfect parry mechanic, which begs to be mastered by tryhards like me looking for that extra dopamine hit that comes from a timely block at the last possible second. You'll also be forced to change up your tactics regularly, since many enemies have color-coded shields that can only be broken by spells of a particular type. For example, enemies with a red shield won't be damaged until you hit them with a fire-based spell, which means you'll need to keep a few of those handy. While the combat system never stops being entertaining, the creatures you fight do run out of tricks up their sleeves. You'll see the same familiar faces a lot, as you spend an enormous amount of your time fighting dark wizards, Quite conductive, aren't we? spiders, Incendium. and goblins. <laughs> Every once in a while, they'll trot out a troll enemy or nondescript magical suit of armor as well, but the enemy's legacy throws at you can wear thin pretty quick. When you're not lighting spiders on fire, you'll need some lighter activities to spend your time with, and it's actually kind of crazy just how many side tasks legacy gives you. You could spend hours decorating your very own personal space in the Room of Requirement, go around catching, grooming, and breeding all manner of fantastic beasts, if you know where to find them, practice your gardening or potion making, go shopping in Hogsmeade, become a champion duelist in an underground dueling ring with your classmates, or even go full Voldemort and decide you want to become a master of the dark arts by learning the Killing Curse and other unspeakable acts, which goes about as well as you'd expect if you choose to pursue it. Naughty, naughty, you'll get caught -y. It's not just easy to waste hours goofing off. I found it downright difficult to not get distracted by a dozen things and forget what I'd originally set out to do. One of the ways you can completely forget about the looming goblin threat in the main story is by engaging in the over 100 side quests that are packed into the adventure. Not all of these diversions are equally entertaining. Some are definitely your basic go here and kill or collect this thing errands that do little more than burn some time, but many feature one of the aforementioned awesome characters, asking you to solve their problems or help them get into some good old fashioned mischief. Meet me outside the library tonight and tell no one. It also helps that you're often appropriately rewarded for your efforts, whether that's earning some gear to upgrade your stats, cosmetic items to improve your swagger, or best of all, new spells. The ultimate carrot in a game where you're often limited only by what magic you know how to cast. For example, one side quest gives you the Alohomora spell, which in classic Metroidvania fashion allows you to literally unlock doors and get into places previously inaccessible to you. Collecting spells goes a long way to opening up the map and giving you a better bag of tricks during combat, and I found myself positively thirsting for as many of these game-changing abilities as I could get my grubby paws on. The gear that you'll find doesn't really allow you to create full-on builds per se, but you'll gain some resistances and buffs to your character and can spend some time upgrading and modifying your best items for minor improvements. None of it is particularly game-changing stuff, but it managed to capture my attention enough for me to spend a good chunk of my time looking at my equipment. Of course, the real loot game is about the cosmetics, a fact that Legacy seems to be keenly aware of since they find ways to hide cool-looking clothes all over the place. These items don't have any gameplay impact, but pimping out my Slytherin legend to outshine all the kids from the lesser houses is more than enough of a motivation. Best of all, you can overwrite the appearance of any gear you've got equipped with the look of anything you've acquired so far, which is just fantastic. In nearly every way, Hogwarts Legacy is the Harry Potter RPG I've always wanted to play. 
Its open world adventure captures all the excitement and wonder of the wizarding world with its memorable new characters, challenging and nuanced combat, and a wonderfully executed Hogwarts student fantasy that kept me glued to my controller for dozens of hours. It's certainly weighed down by technical issues, an unexciting but inoffensive main story, and slim enemy variety, but even those couldn't come close to breaking the enchanting spell it cast on me. For more, check out our reviews of Hi-Fi Rush and SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake. And for everything else, stick with IGN.